Hey, Funko lovers. Welcome to the Funko Friends Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Funko, with my co-host, Diva Kine. Hey, guys. And my in-house moderator, <laughs> Simon. <Ooh. laughs> Today, on episode 67, we have the amazing... Tom Gibbis. Welcome. Hello. 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 <laughs> I don't know if I'm amazing, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I am Tom Gibbs. We'll is- see how this goes. <laughs> okay. So, what inspired you to work towards a career in voice acting? Well, uh, I started off as an actor. Uh, becoming a voice actor just sort of became the thing that I that I found a little success in. But uh, ever since I was very little, uh, you know, I'd act out plays in front of my grandma. You know. Uh, I'd always be performing and doing things and uh, I was sort of a ham. And so uh, I started doing school, you know, plays in school and things like that. And then I went to college and studied acting and uh, got an internship at a theater. And, and then I just been kind of working ever since. And, and, and so I've done commercials and television and movies and not a lot, you know, you know, where I really kind of struck gold there was doing the voice work and, um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, of course, you know, ending up with Shikamaru Nara on uh, Naruto was the is the big the big keystone to my career. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I've done a lot of stuff. I worked for the Disney Cruise Line. I've wow. done. I mean, I've done just about anything. I've worked at conventions, you know, like to get people to come to the booth, you know, dressing mm-hmm. up as crazy characters. I mean, you name it, I've pretty much done it all. So, I mean, not necessarily like super successfully but i've done it <laughs> oh, that's great you've had a little bit of everything that's the best way to do it right yeah exactly exactly and well that's the thing as an actor i always think uh you know say yes right so if somebody says you want to do anytime anybody wants you to gives you an opportunity take it right and to <laughs> act to do something to perform and there's i did a lot of comedy so uh maybe it's a little easier for comedic actors because you know, you can go do stand up or you can go do improv or you can do, and it's just like, okay, great. I'll do this thing. And, and, uh, you know, live, live performance theater or interactive theater or like, uh, the things they do at Disneyland, the parks, I never worked in Disneyland, but I worked on the, the cruise ships, uh, cool. which, you know, was a lot of that kind of improvising and just creating a character and kind of going for it kind of thing. And, um, but yeah, that, that. say yes to everything. I always think it's funny when people say, you know, how do I be a voice actor? It's like, I don't know. You become an actor and then you just, you know, you work and and you take whatever work that comes your way and you try and make something out of it. And uh, I just got super lucky getting Naruto. But I had done a a bunch of little stuff and things you've never heard of. It's funny because there's there's voice actors out there that have done two, three hundred shows and you've never heard of them. Because they're yeah. all little, it was a, either the character wasn't that big or the, but they have far more experience than I do. But I just got super lucky to get, uh, I was at the right place at the right time to get Shikamaru. And then, of course, that's that's why we're having, you're talking to me on the podcast as opposed to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, I do love that. Um, you want to say hi just, to the you want me to say yeah we're just say gonna hi. say hi to a couple people in the chat tonight um uh, right. we got funko pdx we got mad hatter we got baby ice <laughs> we got vincent we got headless ned stark <laughs> I don't um know. we got oh, no, brothers. Oh, sorry sorry that's game of thrones i was thinking tony stark <laughs> 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 no, no, different guy different guy um, wait till the Tom trivia Island. comes i'm gonna blow it Oh, you're gonna you're gonna do great. Oh, we got Christina P. And I think I covered oh Rocket Blast Gaming. Hey there. Yep. And uh, welcome guys. Good to see you this Saturday night. Yep. Just hanging with Tom Gibbis. Just hanging. Am I saying it right? Gibbis? On a rainy it's day Gibbis, in California. Right? Gibbis, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's German. It actually doesn't German. really trace back. It's uh they at Ellis Island they gave us a new name. So <laughs> it's a variation of a name. It's the spelling is more English than it is German, but you know that's that's what happens. It becomes Americanized. It's uh, truly an American name. Okay. Uh, what was the first job you were given as a voice actor? Uh, Digimon. 
Really? Uh, yes. Uh, let me think. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so uh, I have some kind of a long story, but do you guys know Jeff Nimoy? Jeff Nimoy is a director. He's an actor. Um, and I ran into him. He was a friend of a friend of mine. And I said, you know, can I audition uh, for Digimon? Because he was working on it at the time, the TV show. And, uh, and he said, well, if you don't have any ADR experience, I really can't use you. And, and I said, well, I've done a lot of other acting things. And I think I've got a voice that would be great for animation. And, uh, and he was, he, he, he kind of poo pooed the idea. Long story short, uh, he had brought in a couple of my other friends who also didn't have experience to audition for Digimon the movie. So I called him up and I just said, Hey, these people don't have experience. Can I at least come in? And he said, sure. And so I came mm -hmm. in and uh, auditioned for the producers and they liked me. Um, and then they asked me, had you done any ADR work, which is the replacement um, audio, which syncing, you know, lip syncing with the English from Japanese. And it is a skill. And back then they didn't have Pro Tools. So you had to like get the timing exactly. Oh, and, wow. Which is why you really didn't want to have newbies doing it. But how do you get into the business if you can't get experience, right? Yeah. It's one of those. Right. And so they said, well, we can't use it for the movie, but we love your voice. So we'd like to put you in Digimon. And so I played Michael in Digimon, did like a four episode arc. And that was my learning curve. And then they said, if you're good at that, we have this other show called Shinzo. And we're we consider, considering you for the lead. And if that goes well, then we'll have you do that. And then, of course, I got Shinzo. And then they said, OK, we're going to give you four episodes. And if you don't get up to speed in those four episodes, we're going to get somebody else. And I was like, okay. okay. And so, so, and then the funny thing is they never tell you. So you do four episodes, then you do five, and then six, and you're like, am I okay? Did I pass the test? Are we yeah. still doing it? And, uh, yeah. and apparently it was okay. And then from there, just one job led to kind of another job and then got to audition for different things. And, um, and then somewhere along the line there, I got uh, uh, Naruto. So, okay. and that's been 18 years of Naruto. So, a long time. Yeah. So how, so how did you get noticed for your talent? Um, that's a that's an interesting question. I mean, I guess you'd have to ask the directors and the producers of Digimon what what they saw in me. But I think I have a unique voice. It's kind of high pitched. Um, I, I think I, I can do those crazy characters. You know, those high. You know, those you know yeah. kind of voices. And I have a very youthful voice, which is great. Um, yeah. Of course, I was a lot younger when I started. Now, look at uh, we're all gray. But, <laughs> um, it, it helps to have uh, many of the heroes in anime and just in in, gen in, in animation in general are um, younger people, and getting kids to do a lot of that stuff is impossible. And I think if you would have got not impossible, but you know, uh, if you would have got a kid, a twelve year old, to play. The characters that we play in Naruto when it started, and then it went for 18 years. You're really rolling the dice as to whether their voices are going to change and to appropriately to the character. And the whole right. thing. but when if you notice, a lot of anime use women to play young young characters uh, because they have that high pitched that 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 they're in that range of voice. Um, mm -hmm. Like Marley Flanagan plays uh, Naruto, and she's right. a woman, and Naruto. Mm -hmm. 10 year old boy so uh but that's very common in anime I know so. that. Oh, but you get, the, you, you get the the you can have a mature actor somebody that mm -hmm. they can coach and direct and talk to and and then to play a kid is a lot easier than getting a kid to play a kid a lot of times because you have to do a thousand takes and boy back in the back in the day when we started like i said it was a skill you had to have the timing and everything correct I think that would be really tough for a kid to do that. So right. Plus, it's oh. like a full time job, right? For a kid you know, and well, young. I mean, yeah, I mean, in eighteen years, it's more like I go in once a month for maybe two hours. So, right. um, per you know, so that's twelve times a year. It's not. I mean, it's not that much. But the whole idea is you're building a career, so you want to have three or four of those going in. And there's been times when I've had three or four shows going at the same time, which is fantastic because then you can kind of, you know, you can do a lot of things, uh, especially in voice uh, because you're not, they're not seeing your face, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you, and you just change your voice slightly and you're somebody completely different. And um, <laughs> right. 
you know. And then the other nice thing too is I'm not limited by what this face could do. <laughs> you know, I would never play Shikamaru in the real world, right? They would never cast me as that. But um, you know, I can portray that voice and I can do that character, and and I I wouldn't be running through the woods or doing you know uh, ninja moves and, and that kind of stuff. They you know they they get some stunt guy type. Uh, action hero actor to do that. So that's kind of fun that this guy gets to do, this face gets to do that. So that's what, that is what the real fun of voiceover is, is it really does expand. You're only limited by um, your voice, you know? Right. So, okay. Um, from, from Naruto to Broto, did you have to, to change your voice a slight bit or oh, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was... Uh, all through it because in Naruto, uh, start off, we were 10, 11, 12 ish, maybe. I don't right. know. <laughs> and then, then we did a three year jump. And that's where I thought, oh, I'm going to be in trouble uh, mm -hmm. because he has to be a teenager now and he's got to have a little bit deeper voice. And then I was a full on adult. So uh, right. I think in the, I think you can hear it if you watch Netflix, which is where the show is now. The mm -hmm. early episodes, Shikamaru's got kind of a higher tone. Um, and it was more like, whatever, what a drag. You know, he was like up in here. And then uh, Shippuden, Shippuden uh, he, it, it goes to what most people think of Shikamaro, which is whatever, what a drag. You know, he's yeah. right there. And then now it's, it's, it's more we're doing more with pace because he's an adult. He's, oh, this is such a drag. You know, and it's, it's like yeah. that. It's more... <laughs> It's there's just a more weight to that he's seen a lot of things and been a lot of places and he's but the whole time he's thought everything was a drag. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what what is the most challenging voice you have done in your career? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough question. Um, just trying to think of other characters. Oh, well. I don't know. I always look at every voice as sort of a challenge. Um, they don't, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. They don't really cast you in things that you're not right for. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could say something like, you know, boy, if I had to do Madara Uchiha or something, the way Neil does it, yeah. I couldn't. Right. So it would be, that would be tough and it would be really hard because I don't have that Madara Uchiha. Yeah. You know, I don't have that base. I don't. Very when very I, I got a little bit of a cold right now, but boy, when I get really sick, my voice just drops. <laughs> and it's like, oh man, I want to go record a ton of stuff because <laughs> I don't have this voice anymore. I have this. this stuff. And, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but that's so anyway, funny. that's where I'm saying like there's there is some screaming and stuff like when we do fight scenes. A lot of mm -hmm. anime has that in a lot of the shows that I've done. Um, so that can get a little taxing after a while. Uh, oh, but generally okay. they're, they're not putting in. And I guess when I audition, I don't choose voices that are going to really hurt my voice or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah, I don't, there are some. Play to your skills, it sounds like. Oh, we, I'll tell you. Okay, here's an example. So I did Justice League Adventures and um, I was playing the toy man in that which is a villain. And he had, I like a, <laughs> you know, kind of a sound. Yeah. And, um, and at one point they needed somebody to play Pa Kent. So Superman's dad. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And, uh, and it's uh, the way it was drawn. He's like the six foot broad shoulder, you know? And so I had to play, uh, they said, Tom, why don't you play uh, Superman's dad, Pa Kent? And then it was like, that's right, Martha. We'll go to the farm, and I'm like, I don't have an adult voice. <laughs> you know, like, I don't. Yeah. I don't have this. Well, I just lived down on the farm, and oh well, wow, the grass. Yeah, it's like I. I have character. I have, but just playing normal, you know, six foot, forty five year old man is really <laughs> not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. And cool. <clears throat> so what uh, life experience you influence you to uh, become a voice actor? What life experience? Uh, I don't, you know, I mean, I just think I was one of those personalities, one of those kids. Uh, I wasn't, you know, if anybody said like, you know, who was the class clown? 
uh, that wasn't me. I was the guy that laughed at the class con. And I took notes like, oh, that was funny. And I'll use it somewhere else. And um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I would, I was always the, yeah. And you can tell I have a sort of a jovial, uh, you know, persona and I, I laugh a lot and I'm, you know, very friendly in that regard. Um, and I think that helps just trying to be, um, uh, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, just to be sort of affable and easy to get along with that, that, that'll, that'll get you more work than, you know, being really good and uh, not to say I'm not a good, but, uh, but, uh, good and difficult only go so far, you know, you have mm -hmm. to be really good. And even these days, it's like, I don't even, you know, they can, we, we've seen that people can be a play, replaced in a second. So you might right. as well be good yeah. to work with and happy and nice. And that's a good, I think I'm getting off what the original question was, but uh, those are good qualities to have. And those, those kind of the kind of things that I think have helped me along the way. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So have you ever turned down a voice acting job? Uh, yeah, well, I have, but not because I, basically I will say yes to just about anything. The reason I have and have had to say no to jobs is because it's a like union or non-union thing. Okay. Um, so I'm in the union uh, there was a time there where they, I was in this thing called, uh, uh, what is it called? It's like uh, before you're not a full union membership, uh, FICOR is what it's called. And it allows you to do some non-union work. And then, uh, at a certain point, the union kind of got tired of that <laughs> and they, they said, we're eliminating this thing. So, uh, you either go union or you don't go union. So once you make that decision, you can do some non-union, but you can get in trouble. And it's like, you kind of don't want to mess with it. So uh, I've had to turn stuff down just because it was non-union. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. No, I understand that. So what, what's one tip that you would give somebody wanting to get into voice acting? Um, today, you have more opportunity than anybody's ever had. Oh, wow. Uh, um, you it's a whole new world out there with social media, with things like TikTok and Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. Where entertainment is going is to, you know, it's streaming, but it's also these small form plat platform and small form comedy. It's hard to do drama on 15 seconds, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, TikTok is a lot of drama, a lot of, I'm oh, sorry, a lot of comedy, a lot of dance, uh, that yeah. kind of thing. but you have, you know, when I was coming, like, back to what we were talking about before, where do you get that experience? Right. Um, what do you do? And, and when I was coming up, like if I want to make a movie part, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. I didn't have the opportunity to do it myself. I do now, but I didn't then. And you have to find people who are going to put you in their thing. Right. You have to be friends with people that are going to help you and, you know, make their movie. And those guys are all trying to do stuff too. So you wanted to find a director that was up and coming so that he would put you in his movie and, you know, the screenwriter that's up and coming that will can only work with a director. And they, usually that was like in the student film kind of work world now, mm -hmm. but we have this uh, thing in our pocket, our cell phones, uh, our smartphones, and yes. you can, you can shoot a movie on your, your um, cell phone. You can, right. you can shoot a 15 second video that can go viral and make four, 4 million people happy for 30 seconds and they can follow you. And that is, uh, that is where it's going. I mean, it's not, it's not like that's going to fold into what we had, which is sitcoms and dramas and television and film. <laughs> the future is not that the future is, TikTok, it won't be TikTok, but it'll be something else that comes out of that. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. In a way, it's yeah. like the early days of Hollywood right now. Uh, it hasn't figured out what it's going to be yet. We can kind of see where it's going, but everybody can, with you know, with their little cell phone, um, you've got a recording studio in your pocket. You've got You've got video in your pocket. You can edit in your pocket. You can, you know, I, I mean, it's really up to you. And and maybe this is the scary part. It's wide open. It's a wild, wild west out there. Um, mm -hmm. You don't know. You just make it, throw it against the wall, see if it sticks, see if you can find an audience, build that audience, turn it into something. And there's people that are out there 
doing that. And then we all kind of go, a TikTok star. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be somebody who will then take that to another level. Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs> Right now, That's we're kind of in the early days of Hollywood, the, the silent film era where it was just shorts. It really is like silent film in that you have to tell a story in a very short way using the language of film, uh, which is now video, the language of TikTok. And it, somebody's going to put that all together and all of a sudden, just like in silent movies, they, they did a one-reeler, then they made a two-reeler and a three-reeler, and next thing you know, they had film, movies full-on stories right. that were 90 minutes long. This, I don't know if we'll ever get back to that because I think our we have short attention spans. But um, yeah. anyway, it's uh, it's a brave new world out there. Go out there and make it yours. Because right. <laughs> right. this old man is kind of on the fringe of that. <laughs> uh, I think we have a question from the chat. Uh, Simon? Uh, from Umpty Scratch 13. Are you a Minnesota Vikings fan? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm unfortunately, uh, I shouldn't say unfortunately, it's uh, a long-suffering Minnesota Vikings fan. <laughs> um, I love them. Uh, they've always been, you know, here's the thing. They've always been like a B-plus team. We've There's been very few years that they were like an F team, like they really stunk. They've always been in there, always on the edge of the playoffs, never won a Super Bowl. We've gone into the playoffs. Uh, but, and that's frustrating. And cause you know, we got green Bay right next door, but green Bay is feast or famine. They're either the best team or they're the worst. Yeah. You know, they, it, it doesn't. And of course, when they're the best though, they end up with a bunch of Super Bowl rings and, and then they act like they're better than Minnesotans <laughs> <laughs> when we know they're not, you know, <laughs> but if there's anybody that can take being a losing team, it's Minnesotans. Cause it's like, Oh, well, I guess, you know, uh, <laughs> you know that, other team, that other team, you know, it's good for their city to win, you know, <laughs> they needed it. You know, it's fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> so our next question is, what is your favorite project you've been a part of? Uh, well, I mean, Naruto, just because it's length and it's 18 years. I really love the character I got to play. Um, before I played Shikamaru, who's the like the lazy, smart ninja, I, I played right. a lot of like, Naruto-type characters. The overexcited, you know, hey, everybody, let's get out of here. You know, like really that kind of really high voice, yeah. annoying uh, lead. So good. And then I ended up getting to play tomorrow, and I really, uh, I really liked him. And it's that's just been, uh, it's really just been, and just recently, you know, since pandemic, I didn't used to do a lot of cons or anything like that. And since the pandemic, I got into social media, and it's really blown up. And and then been out on the road, uh, going to conventions and meeting people. And of course, I had a Funko Pop that came out, and that this guy right here, he's right here. Uh, that that kind of changed a lot too, because when you have a Funko Pop, then you have something to sign when you go to a convention and stuff. So all of a sudden, I went from I did two conventions my entire life. I mean, where I was a guest, <laughs> I worked a lot of conventions <laughs> where I was working the convention, and uh, but I did uh, I did two maybe the whole time the eighteen years, and then this year, last year I did fourteen. And oh um, wow. It was crazy and fun. And I'm, we're finally getting to hang out as a cast. We never did when we shot the show. So we're all kind of becoming friends, which is the ones that of us that are doing these um, convention things together. And, mm -hmm. and it's really great. I got to say, these uh, the people that are on this show are super great people. And they, nobody's got a big ego. Nobody's um, – everyone gets along. They're, you know – Brian Donovan, who plays Rock Lee, he's so he's really liked Rock Lee. He's like a cheerleader. He's so like uh, into people and trying to make change in the world, and such a good person. You just want to hate him, you know. And, <laughs> and then, you know Michael Yurchek, who plays Obito. I mean, to a person, I think we all go, he's the nicest guy in the world, and he is. He's like the super nicest guy in the world, and he plays Obito, uh, Toby, <laughs> which is like one of the worst villains you know 
And, uh, and of course, Miley Flanagan, who's Naruto, she and I go back like 30 years. We used to do improv comedy together in Minneapolis. Oh my goodness. And, um, yeah. And then it's funny, we come out here and then we end up on the same show and, um, and it's kind of fun. And so anyway, we've had Kate Higgins who plays Sakura. She's so sweet. And, um, Steve Bloom, who's a wrote Ulrich Shimaro is, you know, he's just a great guy. I mean, everybody's, um, uh, it's, and it's uh, like, uh, Asuma. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna forget his name. Uh, uh, oh no, I'm blanking. Uh, anyway, we we all hang out together. we when we're doing these shows, and we never see each other in the studio, okay? Because we all record separately. Uh, oh, and okay. So for for 18 years, we we're all on this show. We've all experienced a little bit of success of that show. But we never really met each other or hung out or were in the same room when we were recording. And now we're going doing these panels and asking questions and you know all that kind of stuff. So Doug Airholtz. Really cool. Doug Airholtz is awesome. I'm sorry. I you know it's funny. <laughs> it's funny when when we kind of we met a couple of times, but when we did a couple cons together, Ugh, uh, Doug, not Ugh, Doug, who plays uh Asuma, <laughs> Because Asuma and Shikamaru are so close, it's funny. Like I felt like, oh my god, this is Asuma right here. <laughs> Asuma Sensei. <laughs> like, you do feel like that because we have acted together, but not in the same room. It's really, um, yeah, we're connected. Which is, I just think it's so great that now we're actually able to go have dinner. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. Um, if you could talk to your younger self and deliver some words of advice as you were just getting started in your voice acting career, what would you say? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was pretty old when I was started my voice acting career. So uh, I feel like I, I made a lot of good moves. Um, oh, okay, good. Yeah. I don't, and I still don't know the secret would be like, how would I get more work out of those years, you know, ringing them out. But I don't know. I, I, I did a lot of good things. I don't think I did too many. I didn't piss anybody off or uh, yeah. I don't know. I, you know, that's a tough question. If I go back to like when I was starting out as an actor, it'd be like, okay, take a deep breath. This is going to be a long, slow ride. <laughs> You know, you think it's going to be, you're going to get on a sitcom and your life's going to change and you're going to go do Saturday Night Live. And it's like, no, it's a process. <laughs> but yeah. you're going to do a lot of other things. That's the other thing too. Uh, anybody that's getting into acting, we have a lot of ideas of how it's going to go and it's not going to go that way. <laughs> no matter what, even if it goes well, it's not going to go the way you think it does. So get, get ready to just be like, take what life gives you. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, and be happy with what you're given. And that's that's a good. But I don't. Uh, there was a couple of years where I was bitter. But <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, I think I've been pretty uh, appreciative of all of the, uh, the the joy that this and kind of heartache that this business can give you. OK, yeah. well said. Um, do you have a dream voice over uh, voice over role? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> no, it's just like an act. Yeah, give me whatever. I want to. I want to play in that sound. Try anything. Yeah. I'm. I'm so. You know. I, I it's a good that. attitude. And just like, uh, well, if you go, if you could pick, right? You'd go. Uh, I'd love to play one of the Marvel superheroes. I'd love, or DC for that matter. You know, like stuff that when I was a kid, it would be cool to be a part of. But even better than that would be something new that becomes some kids in the futures thing. Like, you know, if you were around when Transformers started or something, you would think, I don't know what this is, but then Transformers becomes this show that kids like, Oh God, that's my childhood. Right. Or he man or, you know, whatever it is, but there's something being created today. That is that. And that's be fun to be a part of, but how do you find that? Like in a bottle, who knows, you know, we do a thousand of these, uh, animes and one of them is huge right but why aren't yeah. the other ones they're just as good i did this show just a couple of years ago it's on netflix 
called Kabanari and the Iron Fortress. It's freaking awesome. And the the artwork, it's a zombie apocalypse. The Iron Fortress is a train. We got to keep the mm -hmm. train running. And we're trying to save people that are in these little villages. And some people don't want to get on the train because they don't believe that it's happening. And uh, and the zombie horde is coming. And oh, it's wow. really cool. It's like a horror kind of whatever. And it was big in Japan. Here it was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why. I don't know why. But that's that's our life, right? Like you you do something, you think, oh, this is going to be big. This will be huge. And it's not. And then you do something else and you go, well, I don't know what this is. It's ninjas and they're in school. I don't know. You know. And then, <laughs> then it's the biggest thing since sliced bread. And you, everywhere you go, you see this little, you know, yellow haired kid wearing an orange jumpsuit. And you're like, what the hell is that? Oh, oh that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> so. So our next question is, does your voice take time to develop or do they come naturally? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was doing improv because I play, played a lot of characters and just had fun playing with my voice a lot. Uh, so for me, I think it's like instinct. Uh, what's the great thing about improv is you can look at something and then you can make a decision and, and go with it. And the worst thing you can do is be wishy-washy right? Make a strong choice. They can then either direct you to do something completely different, but okay. uh, you see so many people that kind of, you don't have time to find it, right? You got to hit it. So they, you come in and you're reading that character. Now they may have an idea in their head what that's supposed to be. And you might hit it, what they're thinking it is. Uh, or you might give them some, something completely different that they hadn't thought about. And that works sometimes too. But the point is to go in and be confident and strong, make a decision and just play it out. Right. Um, too many times we start questioning like that, like halfway through it, I thought S Southern and then I turned it into, you know, New York. And it just sort of <laughs> went into New York for some reason. And then you go, oh, well, that was horrible. I should have just taken New York from the beginning, you know, right. like, or stuck with that Southern and made it work. Right. right. For whatever reason. And that's just accents. But you know what I'm saying? Attitude. Mm -hmm. I definitely do. So the beauty of improv is it gives you that skill to just dive into the deep end of the pool and you're either sinking or swimming. And I think that helps a lot in um, in voiceover for sure. Right. You know, because you usually they'll show you like, uh, you know, this is what your character looks like. OK, you got it. And then you're like, well, that doesn't tell you anything. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's generic man, you know, but. Now that, we what, now that we know what that is, it's like, yeah, it does. Um, there's a great, I don't know who does it. Somebody online does it where they'll show a picture and then they show it to a voiceover actor and then say, come up with the voice. And it's just somebody mm -hmm. randomly do a cartoon and then they just do it. And then sometimes it's, they hit it out of the park and other times you go, eh, I don't know. But if you heard 20 different actors do it, you'd, you'd go, that's the one. And yeah. And that, I'm super clear. Like, I didn't know what I was looking for, but that's it, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a question for from the chat. <laughs> we, have, we have two questions. First one uh, from Mr. Awesome. Uh, what's your favorite thing to say with the voice? <laughs> oh, and Shikamaru. Yes. Shikamaru. Okay, we're gonna get it right, guys. Yeah, Shikamaru. Shikamaru. Uh, the, the, when I got that, when I got cast at that, just first this, I was like, "Thank God I don't have to say his name." <laughs> and it took me a long time. I had to write it out phonetically because people would say, "What character do you play?" And it's like, "Shika something." I'm not, you know, it's so funny. Um, uh, well, Shikamaro's bread and butter is what a drag. Everything's a drag. Uh, but he's got a lot of great quotes. Like, it's not that I'm lazy. I just don't care. Uh, <laughs> and then th he has this great speech, a very dramatic speech, which is, uh, let's see, uh, let's see if I can remember the whole thing. It's like um, that Lord Jashin or whatever isn't your God anymore. I am. And the only one that's bringing vengeance today is me. <laughs> awesome. That's intense. I love that. That was good. I can almost picture the the moment on screen and everything. Very well done. And then our second hey. question. Uh, PDX wants to know who is your favorite celebrity that you've met. And favorite. Are you, are you, 
Well, I'll tell you the biggest celebrity I've met. Uh, <laughs> Zion Williamson. It's more of a joke about because he's huge. Zion Williamson is uh, plays for the Pelicans, and he's a huge Naruto fan. And we did, a, we did an event at Comic-Con this year, he and I, and Amanda Miller, who plays Boruto. And uh, he, he actually gave me a pair. He, he has a line of Air Jordans that he designed around Naruto, and he gave me a pair of my own uh, shoes uh, from, the, from that. It was really kind of cool. Uh, but he, I, I have these wristbands. I think I have some of those. You know, like this. This one says, I wish I was a cloud. But I give these mm -hmm. wrist up bands around at shows, and you can see it's got the little logo. I had them designed and made, and I gave oh, him cool. some of those. And if you go to Zion Williamson on Instagram right now and look at his pictures, he's wearing them in almost every picture. <laughs> he wears them in games. He's dunking the basketball. You see the wristbands, the whole thing. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so, yeah. He's probably the biggest in that regard. Um, but, I mean, I've met a lot of people. And, uh, you know, it's funny because it's hard to think, like, who's, you know, huge. I've met Gene Simmons from Kiss. I've met, uh, okay. met a lot of musicians. I used, to, I used to work for a production company that worked a lot in the music industry. So I, I met a lot of those guys. And um, I'm trying to think who. It's funny because I always try, because I worked with a lot of, those kind of people, I try not to be like starstruck and I try not to get oh, yeah. <laughs> like you know, your autograph or anything like that. I, I'm, I usually play it very cool, probably to the point of where I almost ignore people that are famous. <laughs> I'm in the same room with them because I get, and it's not that I don't care or I'm being kind of, you know, weird or standoffish. It's more like, you know what? You got people approaching you all the time. You don't need me doing that. So yeah. uh, if you want to talk to me, I'll talk to you. But otherwise, I'm just I'll just give you your space. You know, I'm more. <laughs> and uh, right. but they probably go, boy, that guy, he's kind of you know, oh. he's pretty aloof over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's his deal? Sitting at a table alone. You know, it's funny because I go to these conventions <laughs> now, and there are some pretty famous people that are at these conventions, and I. You know, I, I'm just in the break room too. I'm doing my thing. I, you know, yes, sir. You know, you sit. <laughs> Uh, I met I met Alicia Silverstone. I didn't meet her. It's kind of interesting. Uh, oh. at a, we were at a con together. Her son loves Naruto. So I had this funny thing where uh, her manager came down and he was holding his phone and he comes to me and he goes, are you this person? <laughs> and I, I was like, yeah, that's me. And he goes, okay, my client, her son is in love with you and he wants you to sign a bunch of stuff. And so so, and I ended up giving him a bunch of stuff like wristbands and stickers and I signed some stuff for him and I, you know, and I didn't really charge him all that much because I felt like, you know, she's working, I'm working, it's sort of professional courtesy kind of thing. And then she oh, sent yeah. me a video and she thanked me for it. It was really kind of, I'm like, this is so weird. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, from Clueless, uh, Alicia Silverstone. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Batgirl, yeah. Bat, Bat girl, yeah. She's, yeah. she's a very good actress. Yeah. She's very sweet, okay. very nice, and her son is a fan of mine, which I think it's just so weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, why have you accepted so many roles that involve anime characters? Is there a reason or is it a fluke? Because uh, they, I, you know what, I think once you kind of get into anime, this is just true about any aspect of the industry. If I did, if I was on sitcoms, I'd probably get more sitcoms, right? Uh, but you do anime and then you, there's the people that you're working with are all, you know, anime people and production companies and stuff. And so they, they hire you for other things. And so therefore it becomes work begets work. And so if you get any success in any one area, it kind of helps. Then you get other stuff, you know, so okay. it's, I think Makes it's just the way it kind of works. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, would you ever do voiceovers for video games? I do. And Yes. I would love to do all sorts of video games. Uh, I've done all the Naruto video games. But yeah, if anybody's casting out there, uh, I'd love to do Fallout. I'd love to do Assassin's Creed. I'd love to do voices on <laughs> oh, wow. all these kind of, you know, tentpole uh, franchises. Uh, I'm in. So yeah, I love that. I'd love to do that. Uh, do you play video games? At I all, do. Or no? The fact oh, that I can do. name four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I give it away. Yeah. I was, actually, I was playing Call of Duty just, uh, you know, earlier in the day. So. Oh, uh, there that's you awesome. go. 
Yeah, I used to. I don't play so much, you know, like in group stuff where you on mic. Uh, I used to, and then people just wouldn't. They'd say, and I don't bring it up, and I don't talk about it and stuff. But they would say like, "So what do you do?" or something. And I'd be like, "Well, I'm a voice actor." Well, have I heard you anything? And I'm, well, I do Shikamaru and Naruto. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> or do the voice of like, okay, I do the voice. They go, oh yeah, that's a good impersonation, but you're not him. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right. <laughs> so I can I can either argue with kids on online for two hours, or I can just play the game. So I shut my mic off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is one voice actor that you like? Uh, sorry, look up to and get inspiration from. If there's uh, there's a lot of great voice actors out there right now. Steve Bloom is, you know, he's he's well, he's got such a unique and beautiful voice. It's um, but yeah, he just he works and he he's just got a he's a sweet guy and uh, I love his voice. Um, there's just I mean everybody on Naruto that I work with, I, I think they're all fantastic actors, and um, I just you know have so much fun with them. I'm trying to think anybody that's really like outside of my sort of people I know that I think is just like, oh, um, John John H. Benjamin, Archer, uh, Bob's oh, cool. Burger. Oh, really? uh, I love I first, Bob's Burger. Yeah. I first became aware of him in um, home movies. If you haven't seen that, it's fun. Go get the yeah. DVDs or I don't know if it's on streaming anywhere. But he plays two characters in that, a little kid and then Coach McGurk. I love his voice. Uh, it's just, I, it's, it's, it's just funny. Just, he doesn't need, he has, he doesn't have to say really that much. And it's funny because of the, just the tone and tenor of his voice. And she's sort of the, I don't know what to say. I just think he's super funny and talented, you know? So, yeah. and then he does it, Archer. It confused me when he does Archer. Cause he doesn't look like Archer. No. You know? it, it, he, yeah, like yeah, Archer yeah. Macho kind of like, like uh, screw this and everything else. Yeah. He, he he does the sort of nebbish guy like Bob's Burgers, you know. It's really yeah. funny. No, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even do that voice. I just love that tenor and that the way he does that voice and stuff. I just think he's fantastic. He looks like a Bob's Burgers. Guy. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He plays like a lot of those sort of nebbishy kind of hum hum. You know, life has not been kind to this person. <laughs> 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 Um, so have it, have you ever attempted a female voice in your career? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I do <laughs> just like in comedy and stuff or just for goofing around with friends. I do my mom all the time. I can uh, imitate my mom. She's from Minnesota, you know. And uh, so one of the things she's been doing lately <laughs> is she says, oh, I got the Colvis. Uh, and she's trying to say COVID. <laughs> Oh, the Colvis. Oh, yeah. Your sister got the Colvis and then she's been, you know, sick for like 10 days, you know. So, but, you know, that's very caricature type of stuff. Um, but I did, I did a lot of plays. I did a play called Greater Tuna where half the characters are, it's two guys. They play every character in this little town and the play has got probably 40 characters. So 20, we're pl basically playing 20 characters each and 10 of those would be women. And um, it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I've done, I've done like, it's not like drag, but it's. No, know, no, I get what you're yeah. saying. Um, no, not, nothing against drag, but uh, I'm just saying it's more like uh, Milton Berle in a dress, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a different kind of comedy. So. Yeah. Is there anything you wish to improve on in your craft as a voice actor? Yeah, I think I could be better at the business of it, you know, like uh, make, maintaining relationships with agents and stuff and to get through more casting and things like that. Um, but that's, uh, I don't know. You, you can always be better. You can always kind of um, uh, learn something new. Uh, it's always good to take a class. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, Steve Bloom has a class, uh, Bloomvox Studios. Uh, I don't. I think that might be just the name. Like if you just put that in, you'll get it. And uh, uh, it's always great to learn something new and kind of um, uh, understand the business a little better. Mm -hmm. Every every actor can learn something new. Anybody says that they oh, I've got it mastered. They don't know. It's almost like you're always learning. You're always growing. Otherwise, 
and like I said, the business is changing all the time too, you know, with, with a lot of like Instagram and TikTok and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, there's always, you can always learn about that kind of stuff and how to appeal to that audience, which I find it's just random. Like I'll do something. I think it's super funny and it gets like a thousand views and then I'll do something that I think is kind of lame and it gets 2 million. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It depends, yeah. I don't, I don't get it, but, you know. Yeah, it for is. sure. Um, you kind of answered this question a little bit. Um, do you have a Funko of yourself? You answered I that. I do. Do you have more than one? <laughs> not of Shikamaru. Uh, no, I do not. I, actually, I mean, I don't, that's the only character I have that, that, is, uh, that is, has a Funko. So. Uh, they're really great. I wish everybody in our cast had one. We have a we have a <laughs> lot of them, but like Tamari, who plays Shikamaru's wife, does not have a Funko Pop, and it's like, oh, uh, I feel bad for her. <laughs> 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 like every everybody should get a Funko because then you can get out there on the convention circuit and you know, uh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're very helpful for a voice actors. Just let me say so. <laughs> Speaking about that, so how many ha Funko Pops do you think you've signed over the year of being a voice actor for Naruto? That's a good question. I don't know because we, you know, we do a lot of private signings and stuff, and uh, I've done some stuff where I go to a toy store where they just you just sign them and they put them in the back and then they sell them at some other date and stuff. So, okay, it's gotta be a it's gotta be a few thousand. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that number would be. <laughs> um, but I'm getting um, I'm getting really good at doing the hidden leaf symbol on the side. Now, you know? Okay. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know that. So we've had uh, two episodes ago. We had first form uh, collectibles, and I know you were at their booth. Booth. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. How was that? It was fun. That was at Comic Con um, in L.A., which mm -hmm. it was one of those things. Uh, it was fun because we did Pasadena like the week before or two weeks before. And I thought that was the last show I was going to do for the season. So mm -hmm. Pasadena was like December 1st. And then they called me up and they said, Hey, do you want it? Would you want to be in the booth for this thing? And I was like, sure. And um, it, came, it was like a nice little surprise. And being that it was in LA, I could just drive down to the convention center park, just go in, do my thing, leave, you know? So, uh, and it was actually a great, we had a good spot and um, there was a lot of people there and people didn't expect that I was going to be there. So that was kind of a little surprise and it was fun right. and uh, sort of last minute. And um, yeah, it was a great time. So, and I think the guys that, uh, you know, put it all together were very happy with the outcome as well. So, cause I think they wanted, they were wondering about my availability to do some other things, which I was like, well, that's always good, right? <laughs> so, uh, so I think they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. So. Oh, that's good. Um, so, what is your favorite con you have been a part of? Um, I'm going to say Anime Riverside this year was pretty fun. Um, there was a whole bunch of us from Naruto. I want to say there was like 14 of us. Oh, wow. And they did, they had this out, it was in the middle of summer. So they had this outdoor stage mm -hmm. and it, the, the nice thing about that was just people could kind of crowd into the stage and I, I don't know how many people were there, but it just seemed like there was thousands and thousands of people and they were yeah. up on the hillside and all over the thing in the back. And, you know, we had, this is the first time that we had all kind of been together all at one what they tend to do is they put right. us in little groups and send us out to different shows. And this time we were all together, <laughs> yeah. uh, all of us. So it was, you know, you get to say like one or two things on the mic because there's 20 people on stage, but, yeah, but it was fun and the crowd was into it and uh, it was so much, it, it was just crazy time. It was really fun. It was really nice. Yeah. I, I think I saw a video a little while ago of all of you being in this little room um, at that con, I believe. Oh yeah, they put us in a side room. Oh, it was so hot in there too. I mean, every every con has like a has good or bad to it too. That yeah, yeah the panel for that was really phenomenal. Uh, the room we were in was tiny, tiny, and the the, the lines were down the hall and around what? the block, and, and it was like I felt right. bad oh, no. that had to wait in line so long, and um, so that was kind of. 
that was kind of, I felt bad because there were people saying they were there for five hours. I was like, why are, what? No, we got to be able to move yeah. these lines better so that people don't have to wait, waste their whole day doing that, you know? Um, but hmm. I, I went to a lot of great places. I went to Providence, Rhode Island this year. That was fun. I went to uh, um, WeebCon in Texas in a snowstorm, mm -hmm. which was super fun. Even people had a hard time getting there. They're, they had to close a lot of stuff down. People weren't able to get in to work the convention, but we all kind of like, you know, we're going through this thing together and, and it gave it a, a really, it was fun. It was, it was just like, we right. all did this thing. We did it. We, we made this thing happen, you know? So right. um, I've had some really great cons this year and met a lot of really nice people. And uh, I got to say, uh, anime fans are, they're really great. They're just really good people, you know? Yeah. So I would agree. Have you ever visited Canada for a con or not yet? Not yet. Because I don't, the, the, the two cons that I did but prior to, you know, pandemic and getting in, involved in all this. And then there was also an explosion of Naruto interest. Uh, in pandemic, because I think what everybody did was when we went into lockdown, is they watched 750 episodes of Naruto. And <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> That's probably and, and all of a sudden, you know, kids that now have kids showed their mm -hmm. kids, and we have this. It's a super wide audience uh, reach that we have now, and and everybody was super into it, and because it's been around for a long time, and. You know, I, no one was knocking on my door to come do a, you know, if you could get somebody, you'd get like Miley who plays Naruto or you'd get Sasuke, you yeah. know, and like those are your big, or if you could get Kakashi, you could get Kakashi and that, that would be a draw. The rest of us, the Rock Lees, the, you know, Asuma, the Chojis, the Enos, the, there was like, eh, eh. <laughs> you know, or, or it's like, eh, we got Naruto, we don't need, you know, we don't need the sidekick. <laughs> And and now all of us have been kind of that's cool you know, getting to go out and also at okay. the same time like my Funko Pop dropped and and that was true for a few people that mm -hmm. are not out there with us in the, uh, signing and stuff and when you got a Funko Pop it's like that's that's a whole different ball game you know yeah so Canada I've been to Canada and I did work a convention it wasn't an anime convention it was yeah. back when I was just an actor working a show. <laughs> and uh, I can't remember what we did, but I know we got in trouble, not in trouble, but because it was like, are you here for work or pleasure? And it was like, <laughs> well, not really getting paid, but I'm doing a job at this convention. And I had, you know, uh, <laughs> I, think I was, I think I was playing a, um, uh, like a, a modem. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing was we had a modem and we had a server and how information packages get trans. This is like for some trade show thing, and uh, that's what we did at that. So I did yeah. go to Canada. Nobody went on my signature when I was there then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for our next question, we noticed there's a lot of pit, uh, pizza pictures on your Instagram. What's that all about? Pizza. Oh, because I got a new grill. That's what I was like, yeah. No, uh, so we my wife and I bought this uh pizza stone thing and it fits over your regular grill. My barbecue, I've got a little barbecue grill out in the back. And so I we got this thing and it was really not that expensive, which I was surprised by. And I wasn't even sure if it was gonna really work all that well. And mm -hmm. it works great. And so we the, our thing was we we were making pizzas. So last summer we had people over and we everybody made their custom pizzas. We did this like three or four times with a different groups of friends and it was a big hit. And so I kept taking my experiments and, you know, this is, I use this kind of bread and this is, and this is what this one looks like. And this is what that one looked like. And I was taking pictures of it. And because, you know, content, you just want to put something up. I thought, well, everybody can relate to pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I was making these custom pizzas and um, uh, they were a big hit. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So when visiting <laughs> cons, what is the most creative costume you've seen? The creative costume? Yeah, a costume that somebody's wearing. Yeah, like a cosplay thing? Um, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different stuff out there. Boy, I, I, that's a tough one. To, I, I've seen some people that have done some really great Shikamaros and they've done some great Naruto's. 
Uh, but that's because they come to our booths, you know, so they come over. Um, right. There was a guy that came in as like a heat on. Well, you get a lot of people that come as the Akatsuki because that's just a robe and then they put their little thing yeah. on the scratch through. That's it, you know. <laughs> super you easy. I wish they had a super easy Shikamaro costume that people could just throw on. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I can't. I can't think. I can't think of anything at the moment. I may have po posted something online on Instagram or TikTok if I saw something really cool. But right. uh, I always say that I'm gonna like live stream from a con. But whenever I'm there, I'm like, uh, I'm so busy and doing do. stuff. Like, I go, oh yeah, I should probably have done something. <laughs> Take some pictures, <laughs> talk to some people, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, so what other uh anime shows would you be interested in voice acting for? Oh, all, all of them, like <laughs> I think we've, we've put it together yeah. that he'll do anything and everything, he's open. You want to put me on a show? Please put me on a show, I'll take it, yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, there's a lot of that have come and gone that you go, ah, oh, why didn't I get to do Bleach? You know? <laughs> yeah. or, oh, wait, uh, you sure there wasn't anything for me in, in One Piece or you know, whatever it is? <laughs> yeah. uh, so who knows? Yeah. Maybe, you know, things come back and they come around. Uh, well, One Piece is still going, but I mean like Bleach, which had a limited run. In it. So yeah, um, One Piece, one piece yeah, is very long. You'll have a long job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I anyway, I love I love all of that stuff. Like oh, Demon Slayer too. It's like I think Demon oh, Slayer Demon is out here somewhere. And um, I was like, oh, you know, if I got that one, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, have you ever talked to the Japanese voice uh, actor that plays the same character as you? Which no, is, uh, unfortunately, I haven't. Uh, we do get asked that a lot, like you know, what is what is what do the Japanese think of you guys? And it's like they don't think of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you know, there's the cast of the office in the United States, and then there's the Spanish voiceover of those guys. And you know, in and if you're in Mexico, those guys are famous, but here they're not. It's the same. It's the same oh, thing. There's a German nice. cast. There's an Italian cast. There's a French cast. I think the American actors we get we get a little, little bit more juice out of it because um, English is pretty much standard around the world, uh, yeah. you know. So, so it's it's also one of the Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, yeah, England, um, United States, which is a huge market. And so I think just because of the size of the market, um, we we become kind of known as those voices. Um, so I, th it's big for us here in the United States and, you know, going to cons and stuff. But, um, and I think the Japanese actors would probably do well in the United States as well if they came. Mm -hmm. um, but because there's so many people that go, I only watch it in the original Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Like that. <laughs> That's fine. And, uh, but uh, they're kind of the original characters. So I think they look at it as, you know. There's in the same way, I feel like I have a little ownership of Shikamaro. He really has ownership of Shikamaro. <laughs> he's the guy, and he's famous in Japan for it, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, I give it to him. He's, you know, it's his. Understandable. Okay. Um, if you weren't a voice actor, what other career path would you have considered? Uh, well, I've always. I mean, I've kind of worked behind the camera a little bit and uh, worked as a producer and a, I've worked in production uh, in a variety of different roles a lot over the years. But that's still kind of adjacent. Like if I was really going to yeah. give up all of that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My dad owned a furniture store. I probably would have taken over the furniture store. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, office furniture. You know, that's we we sold used office furniture. So um, it was it was a recession proof business, and uh, you know, my dad made an all right living out of it. So it, we we I could have made it into something, but I probably would have always wanted to act, and then that would have been a problem. So, <laughs> uh, so it is time for these teas. Uh, it's trivia. So are you ready? You ready for all right. Dead? We'll try it. Okay. We'll see what happens. Put on your cap 
<laughs> okay, first question. Um, who created the TV show The Walking Dead? Well, <laughs> this is what it, I, Dareborn, Dare, uh, Scott yeah. Gimple is the executive producer. And here's a funny thing. I took an improv class with Scott Gimple. I know Scott Gimple. <laughs> He's like the guy now. So like when you do Talking Dead, they bring him out to talk. Uh, is it Dareborn? It... No, you, you got it. You got it right. Darebont. It's Frank Darebont. Dare Frank, yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember the first Yeah. Part. Okay, so that was good. Uh, Start. Um, in season one, yes. where do Amy and Andreas' parents live? Their parents? Well, it's Atlanta is where it's set. Uh, and I think they met them at the uh, RV court. Wait a minute. What's the state that they live in? Oh, basically? Georgia? No, not Georgia. Oh, boy. I don't know. I'm sorry. I blew that. Uh, oh, that's okay. No, no. Florida. Florida. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Jane McNeil plays which character in The Walking okay. Dead? What's the name, Jane? Jane McNeil. Yeah, is that? Um... Oh, his wife. Oh, boy, see, this is we're getting. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, it's uh, Patricia. No, that's not who I think. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen this show, so I can't help you a lot. Oh, see, but this is how, yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like, yeah, you got to watch the show to yeah. know, but I'm intrigued by it. I would yeah. like to see this. If it's like the trivial pursuit of Walking Dead, it's like, I no, I watched the show. Uh, you know, we could have just made yeah, it no, general, general pulp culture, pulp, you know, pop culture. Pop oh, culture. Yeah. I can't speak today. Okay. Season one takes place primarily en route to and from what major city? Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You yeah. got that one. Um, 30 Days Without an Accident was the name of the first episode of which season of The Walking Dead? Which episode of which season or which? Yeah, 30 Days Without an Accident was the name of the first episode of which season of The Walking Dead? So yeah, 30 Days Without an Accident. Which season did that? Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm going to go with like, I might be wrong, but I probably am. Uh, the pilot episode. Because he got shot and he was in a coma for 30 days. Something like that. So I'm going to okay. say like, for as far as Rick was concerned, you know, when he woke up, the world had gone crazy. But for him, it would have it, it, some sort of thing like that. You know, it, that's a great know. description, but no. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was season four. <laughs> season four. Was that the yeah. season? Yeah, I don't know. 30 Days Without an Accident, season four. Yeah, it's the factory. That's a it's sort of a reference to a factory thing, you know, like. Oh, okay. You know, we're 21 days without having an accident, you know. Oh, I see. Outside of a factory kind of a thing. So it's a reference somewhat to a workplace kind of thing. Okay, no, I definitely get what you're saying now. Um, okay, the TV show The Walking Dead is based mm -hmm. on a comic series published by who? Is it Black Horse Comics? Uh, no. No, no. Dark uh, Star? No. Nah, go ahead. Okay. Um, image? <laughs> image. Image. Yeah, um, when I saw that, I was like, Image? Yeah, real Walking Dead fans out there are like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no. What does he mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the name of the actress who played Lori? Oh. It's your thing? Ah, shoot. I don't know. I mean, no, I don't know. No? Okay. Uh, Sarah Wayne Collies? Yeah, I would have never gotten that in a million years. I can see her face. No. like I, you know. Yeah, that's why I said. Can you see yeah. her face? But can't yeah. recognize the name. Okay. Okay, so Louise, Doug, and Summer are all what in The Walking Dead? Louise, Doug, and what Summer. What are they? What are they? <laughs> Doug and Summer. I don't know. I'm 
it's familiar. I, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna hate myself when I hear what it is, but walkers. Oh, walkers. walkers. Yeah. What the? He like yeah. explained to me what that meant. <laughs> so basically, the zombies, right? Yeah, they're zombies. They're yeah. Okay, the walkers. Okay. Michonne used to cut their jaws off, and then she'd use them to like keep the other zombies away, and she'd walk them around on a chain. And they couldn't grab oh. her right, because it, she cut her ar their arms off too. Yeah. Um, Lovely show. Very Michonne. graphic. Yeah. Well, it's from a graphic novel. Did I? Oh, dang. <laughs> okay. How many times does Rick travel to Atlanta through season one? Throughout season one. Well, let's see. They go back and forth to where the RVs are parked. And yes, first time he goes in, he gets his horse eaten. Then he goes back to the apartment store. Then they go up to the roof to cut the guy's arm off um, to find Merle. And then uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to say four times. You were close. Oh, so close. Five? Three. 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 <laughs> that was good. He was like doing it in his yeah. head. That was very good. Um, okay. What was Glenn uh, Ree's job pre-apocalypse? Pizza boy. He was a pizza delivery guy. Pizza boy. Yes, oh. yes, yes. <laughs> what year did The Walking Dead first air? Mm. It's older than I thought. Not too old, but older yeah. than I thought. 2002? No. Nope. Higher. Not that old. 13. Sorry. 2013. Lower. 2012. <laughs> Lower. 2011. 2010. 2010. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know it was that far back. Yeah. I went, really? you know, it's funny because I was thinking, you know, when you get older, you think like, I'll say 2002, but I'm really thinking 2012. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it just seems like, oh yeah, they're, they're very. That wasn't that long ago, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's now twenty years ago. You know, it's like. <laughs> okay. Um, the governor tells the Woodbury citizens they were betrayed by who? Uh, uh, well, they're betrayed by it was the blonde-haired girl, which you said in the beginning, who are from Florida. And then I mean, I, you're not I, helping. <laughs> this name is very wait, weird to pronounce. Wait, is it a guy or a girl? You're saying it's a guy? Well, oh, I actually I don't know if it's a guy or girl. It's like a unisex name, I think. Oh, like, okay, then I don't know. It's like Michonne, maybe. But uh, it was the blonde girl. Uh, shoot, go, go she's ahead. the one okay. that actually killed him. Oh, okay. Or shot him. I don't know if she killed him. Oh, but somebody uh, betrayed the citizens. And this it says here, um, Merle, like M-E-R-L-E. -E. Oh, Merle. 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 With okay. the one hand. He had to cut off his hand to get out of the... Oh, That's what I, I was talking about, up on the roof. No. Michael Rooker is the actor. Oh, okay. Merle. Yeah. I thought that could be a boy's name or a girl's name. Okay. <laughs> He's Daryl's okay. brother. See, oh. if there's no questions attached, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> right? Go ahead. Um, season one. While yeah. Rick was looking for gas, which zombie did he come across? Oh, a little girl with a teddy bear? Yeah, little yeah. girl zombie. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, they're, the, they're the creepiest zombies. I would feel really bad came across a, a little girl zombie. It'd yeah. be like, oh my god, I'm sorry, but I gotta chop your head off. Like, <laughs> well, that's the whole head. thing. It's like, yeah, you know, you, right? you see some guy that's, you know, got, you yeah, know, that's so hard. Yeah, it's easier to kill an adult zombie. <laughs> a little than girl you. with a teddy bear coming up to you, like, right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> with blood all over her mouth, and uh, you know, that's that's how they get you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, um, which actor plays the character uh, Lion Bassinet, Bassett, sorry, Bassett, or Leon Bassett, my, my apologies, Leon Bassett. Uh, I'm going to say I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's Lids Edwards. Yeah. Lids Edwards. Okay. Um, 
It's um, been on a long yeah. time. These are very deep, sort yeah, of deep. Uh, I know. Questions. I don't know. I maybe know. super, you know, um, Walking Dead fans. I just threw that out there. Like, what kind of things do you like? And I these I just listed some shows that I um, watch. Right. Uh, but then you realize how little you know. <laughs> right. I have watched it. I've watched every single episode of Walking Dead. I've watched every single episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, Ghost is the one that I really like right now. If you if you see the British version, it's pretty pretty funny too. Uh, and there's an American version as well. So we can move on if 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 it's easier for you. No, we're almost done. <laughs> it's easier because no. <laughs> I'm not doing very well at this game. No, no. So. <laughs> Up. Come on. How many we got? Well, yeah, go ahead. Who knows? Okay. Maybe we'll we'll see. Maybe we we'll get lucky. We'll get in my wheelhouse here somehow. Okay. Um, who first suspects that Jim Jim's been bitten by a walker? Jim. Who's the for who first suspects it? Yeah. I don't. Carl. I'll just say Carl. <laughs> no, it's Jacques. 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 Yes. Yeah, I. It's okay. That, that okay. would have to be like you know. I'd have to get. This feels like the Trivial Pursuit version of this game, <laughs> <laughs> which I'd be like, we can throw a couple of the cards in there with regular trivia, but. <laughs> Some of these are easy though. The next one might be easy. Um, what treasure does Oscar find in an empty prison cell? What treasure? See, I will say this. What constitutes a treasure on that show is different than what it would be on something else because a treasure could be a knife or bullets yeah. <laughs> you know these are things that are well you know fresh water could be a treasure <laughs> on on a show like this because the the way that it's structured yeah um, for sure. like money would be not be a treasure so it'd yeah. have to be it'd have to it's be something, something medicine, the right or medicine or food medicine? food no, food in the no, food no. locker <laughs> No, not food. Um, they slipper. found a bunch of freeze dried food in the prison. No, no, no. It slippers. was slippers. slippers. <laughs> oh, slippers. Yeah, you know right I mean? like, in that yeah. world, anything could be, you know. Okay. What right. kind of car does Glenn steal and drive out of Atlanta? Man, he had a little Hyundai for a while. Is that it? The Hyundai? Nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dodge. Dodge Challenger. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. I wouldn't know this though. Yep. Go ahead. Three more. Okay. Three more. Oh, Three more. <laughs> Don't you worry. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Who is the leader of the prison survivors? Oh, I. You know, it's gonna be somebody like. You know, Scarface or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They all—all all the prisoners ended up dying, so I do know that. Okay. Uh, the the leader is Tyrese. Oh. Uh, yeah. Tyrese. I, uh, anyway, I think he went it on to beat to hang be with them for a while. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Who learns they're pregnant in season two? Lori. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, and last but not least. Which actor plays the role of Rick Grimes? The guy from Love Actually. <laughs> I gotta look that up later. No, he is. Like, Did you ever see Love Actually? I have no. well, a long time ago. Oh, right. It's a it's a fun, it's a romantic great, comedy. Yes. It's a com romantic comedy, and it's set around Christmas. People either love it or hate it. But <laughs> I find it very charming. And okay. uh, he plays one of the characters in it. And it's really funny to see him play that kind of a character who's just right. this guy who loves this girl that married somebody else so he can't be with her. You know, that's his yeah, whole yeah. sort of like a love lorn puppy dog. And that's the Rick Grimes character. And I can't think of his name right now. Um, uh, all right. Okay. Well, we'll, I'm not going to we'll that. Uh, because he can, he yeah. can see his face. It's Andrew Lincoln. Andrew Lincoln, yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Now we're that done with good. trivia, and Enjoyed we're jumping that. into. Was that a punishment in the middle of the show? <laughs> <laughs> so we're 
right, we're going to be jumping into a new segment. It's uh, Simon says, I got questions. Uh, I got questions. So, okay. the moderator will be asking you 10 questions. Right. Wait, sorry, say again. Our moderator, Simon, will be asking you 10 questions. He came asking up with. me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, okay. So, I, I was listening to some of your other interviews, and you did mention a lot about moving out to California. Um, from Minnesota. So how yeah. important do you feel living in, in Los Angeles is, is, is in the, to become a voice actor? And I would assume that the decisions majority take place. And that's why. I think if you're, if you're trying to build a career, going to like uh, New York or LA is, is important. Uh, what's what we're finding now more than ever, especially with voice acting um, you, once you've established yourself and you've, you've got those connections that you can work and stuff, you can live basically anywhere. Um, Steve Bloom now mm-hmm. lives in Hawaii with uh, Mary Elizabeth, his wife, and she's a director. And um, <coughs> excuse me, and um, Robbie Reese, who plays Choji on our show and does a, does a ton of other stuff. He was one of the mutant Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. He's now in Florida. I don't know why I'm 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 pointing like as if like there's a map behind me or something. <laughs> <laughs> So he's in Florida. We we have a, uh, the, a couple of people in, in Vegas now. Um, you really, a guy in Idaho, voice actors that are very big work all the time. Um, it, w- when you're a voiceover and once you're established, uh, you can basically live anywhere. And the auditioning process now, we used to have to go into a studio and you have to go somewhere to audition. And now it's you're doing it all from home and you're doing self, um, yeah. self-report and then you <laughs> send it in. And a lot of people are just recording in general from their house. My, my setup isn't as uh, professional as it could be, although it's getting there. Um, so I like always going into the studio and I'm not a very good editor. So I, I always feel like going to the studio, then I don't have to worry yeah. about why is this not working right? You know, I just have to w- w- worry about the acting part of it, you know? So, right. um, but yeah, so I think getting established definitely even that's even true for big time <laughs> actors. Um, they uh, there's a lot of a lot of big celebrities that live like in Santa Barbara now, and that's not exactly close. It's it's about an hour and a half drive, and right. some people even take small planes to get. Oh no way! We're we're getting into a world where we don't have to be as connected that way. Um, uh, anyway, I think New York, if you want to perform, want to do live theater. Um, even small stuff. Uh, New York's got more of a crowd that goes to see theater. LA, it's you're trying to get casting directors and people to come to your show, and it just feels like everything is a hustle, as opposed to there are you know shows that are put up to just entertain people, and like this is our show and we present it. Uh, everything here has got to be like get an audience to come see it, and you're like constantly begging them. Which is Minneapolis. You go to Minneapolis, great theater town. Same as Chicago. Um, there's theaters that have audiences that come to see shows that you do. You don't have to like get them to come in. You know, they're, they just, they have a following. Um, they're big, they're both big theater going towns. So getting your, but again, like we talked at the beginning, it's all changes now because the theater is now, you know, uh, at TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Number two. Uh, it's continuing on California, the, the topic. Um, California. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I noticed you were on uh, season seven, episode 16 of 9210. Uh, yes. Tell me about the experience. Sorry? Tell, what was the last part tell of about Tell me about the appearance. Tell about the appearance. Uh, my dressing room is right across from Tori Spellings. Uh, I had like two lines. Oh. It was in the piece. Pit. They decided to turn the Peach Pit into a Super Bowl bar, and so I was a 49ers fan for some reason, <laughs> and I had to go up to the bar, and she was having trouble getting the cash, cash registered to work, and Brian Austin Green was trying to help her, or maybe it was the other way around, but um, at some point I go, hey, can I get a little help down here, you know, get a beer over here, and that was my big line, and um, I think I had two, two lines because then he helped me and then they gave me wrong change and i'm like come on you know that kind of thing and uh two things i noticed about that show one on everybody whispered 
Um, because they'd been doing it for so long really? and their mic, they just knew how to like get the mic so hot. So it's a it's supposed to be a oh. crowded bar, people are screaming and watching football and the whole thing. So they they there was no sound, but the other actors like Brian Austin Green and Tiffany Tip, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, they'd be down at the end of the bar going, I don't know what's going on. I, I, I couldn't get the machine to work. I put the button and it doesn't happen. And I'm, I'm like trying to hear my cue because I'm from a theater background where it's like, I can't get the machine to work. You talk at full volume. But they, they literally yeah. would talk at half volume, almost whisper volume. Um, oh which is, if you, think about, if you watch that show very carefully now, not that episode, but just that show in general, everything is like this. It's very, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I have to go to the prom. I don't know. You know, that kind of thing. They're, they're, they're I'll, I'll have to go back and watch. To see. And then the other, the, the other thing is my, my uh, the dressing room is right across from Tori Spelling. She watched the, the reruns of the show while we were filming our show. So, because it was on in the afternoon, it had already been syndicated. She would like, and she'd dra drag people into her thing, into her dressing room, and go, "Look at, remember when you had that hairstyle, and remember when you wore those things?" And like, she was <laughs> like, it had been on for a while. So, uh, she was yeah, pointing yeah. out how they had changed the look and the feel of the show had changed. Uh, and then I, they they came by and they said, "Is pizza okay for for lunch?" And I said, "Sure." And they go, "Like, what would you like on it?" And I go, "Whatever everybody else is having, that's fine." And and so next thing I know, I come back to the guest room, full large pizza. They've ordered one just for me. Oh my God. <laughs> here, I thought, here I thought the rest of everybody in the cast is going to have a meal break, and they're getting pizza. Great, yeah. I'll just have a slice. I don't care, whatever. I'll eat anything. And they gave me this whole pizza. So I'm sitting in the dressing room. You know, I had like one or two lines anyway, and I'm listening to. Tori Spelling talking about, you know, old episodes and I'm eating my large pizza. And it's like, I, could, I couldn't have felt more pathetic in my life. <laughs> By myself in the corner, eating this pizza that's like way too big for one person to be eating. It was so, it was funny. That's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> good story. Good story. Uh, number three. All right. So you're obviously never on camera as a voice actor. However, you, you get your name in the credits at the end. Uh, how often are you recognized for your voice acting outside of any sort of comic cons? It happens every once in a while, but um, not that often. I was at a Radio Shack once, and I had that's how long ago it was. But the, <laughs> but Naruto was still on, and I was looking for something, and you know, a certain type of battery, some unique battery, and the guy that was helping me was like do I know you? Your voice sounds really familiar. And then I kind of went, well, I did. And he was like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> uh, so that's happened a couple of times, but actually it, it's, it's pretty rare. Oh no. And uh, I was at a airport in Dallas. This, the waitress was new. Who, you know what I'm finding now is <laughs> kind of a funny little thing that changes. Uh, uh, I was even at an event and this guy goes, Hey, can I do a live you know, TikTok thing with you. And I was like, great. And then he's like, hey, everybody, uh, I'm here with Tom Gibbs from TikTok. And I was like, Tom Gibbs from TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tom Gibbs from Naruto. <laughs> you know, like, so all of a sudden, this, you know, the things I've been doing on TikTok have become a life of their own as well, which is kind of yeah. strange. You know? Yeah. You got it. On uh, number four. Okay, so uh, just reading something off of narrow.fandom.com. Oh, boy. Um, so just a description of uh, Shikamaru. Though lazy by nature, Shikamaru has a rare level 200 intellect that consistently allows him to prevail in combat. The responsibilities that these successes leave him with cause, cause him frequent annoyance, <laughs> but he gladly accepts them. What's an attribute? that Chikamaru has that you see in yourself? Uh, well, I always, I guess I've always kind of thought I was a little bit of a lazy guy or a, a bit of a procrastinator. Um, but <laughs> it's funny. I used to think I was lazy until I moved to California. <laughs> and then you realize that Minnesota lazy is California go-getter. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I'd show up on to work on time and I'd still I'd be there and you know uh 
do everything that was expected of me at, at a job. And, and people were like, Oh, you're, 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 you hustle. And I was like, really? Cause I got up 10 minutes before I had to be here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, sort of, uh, I always thought of myself as a, sort of lazy. And then you when you compare to other people, then all of a sudden you're like, well, maybe I'm not so lazy, but yeah. So that's, uh, that's a uh, Shikamaru. I, I, you know, I also would like to think I'm a little, I don't think I have a 200 IQ by any means, but uh, I would like to think I'm a little, a little smarter than the average bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next question, Simon. Uh, many people, including myself, can't stand listening to their own voice. So I've heard of some <laughs> actors not able to even watch or listen to their own work. For you, what was it like hearing your voice for the first time? Uh, yeah, when you hear your voice on a mic, I think it's one of two ways. I do like, it's funny, I do enjoy, I kind of, it's weird, it's hard to say. When I hear myself live on mic and I hear it back in my head, I like, I, I like the sound of it, I like to play with it. That's the funny thing, like, oh, that sounds really cool. Oh, I can hear that, you know, and um, <laughs> when I see it, like, when it's been done, it's finished work, I'm not there doing it. Um, mm. it always seems strange. Like, that's my voice. What's my voice doing over there? What's the, and then, yeah. you know, then it kind of wound up into like, oh, well, that's kind of an interesting choice. Why did I, you know, why did I go down with that and not step <laughs> up or, you know, and then you, or, or I'll even be listening to it. And then I, I'll maybe repeat one of the lines back in my head. And, oh, I should have done it that way. You know, mm. <laughs> So it, it can be annoying that way because you you kind of judge your own work and uh, it doesn't matter because it's already in the can and it's done. The time to judge it would be in the booth. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, our next question, Simon. Okay. So uh, if you can recall, in two thousand two, uh, you partaked in a Christmas special called the Lobo Caramilla yeah. Christmas Special. I wish I'm you mean, eat your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so, uh, I I hired Lobo to kill Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to read the description of the oh. of the special here. So, um, the Easter Bunny is tired of being second to best to the Christmas, <laughs> so he hires Lobo, aka the main man, to take out Santa Claus in order to rule over the holidays. But nothing goes planned when the main man is involved. So I have to say, I've watched it fully, watched it a couple of times, and the ending definitely surprises me. But my, but the real question here is, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. <laughs> I think so. It's around Christmas time. You know, they're definitely using it as a backdrop. Uh, I know it's not a Christmas movie thematically, but in essence it is. So, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> I know Bruce Willis says it isn't too. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so um just going back i think we were talking about you know remembering pronunciations and characters um <laughs> when it comes to voice actors in in anime what would you say the percentage of voice actors are hardcore anime fans themselves um i don't know i mean probably pretty low actually um, we do it. We like, I know everything that Chikamaro knows because I recorded that. I don't necessarily have watched all 900. We're at 950 episodes with Boruto now, something like that. Um, I know like threads of storyline, but I feel like I can speak to what Chikamaro's experience on the show is. But as far as then watching other animes and stuff, and I'd say pretty true about. Most of the people I know that work in it, very small percentage um, do. Unless you're like directing, then you become kind of an expert uh, on the mm. show. Um, and, you know, I definitely can speak about our show. Uh, and I definitely know the bullet points. Uh, I don't necessarily know all the details, but I do know all the bullet points. But, yeah, I don't know. It's We were just – most of us are a little bit older. you got to remember the show's been on for 18 years too – so right. um, anime didn't really it, it existed when I was a kid, but and I did watch some of it, but um, I, I don't know, just it, we just didn't really kind of stay with it. So that's right. what I'm okay. Right. Uh, next question. 
Um, so we were discussing about the Naruto video game that you, you did in the series there. Yes. Um, do you find out, was it any different performing for that than the anime series? It is because it's it, uh, definitely with the video games, it's chopped up more. Uh, so when you're working your way through a script in the show, uh, there's sort of an arc and you're, you're kind of understanding what, what the next line leads to the line. It has to do with the line before it and the line that's coming up. So um, mm. you're, you're, you're trying to create a scene or whatever. And with the video games, you're just more one-off uh, uh, one-liners, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so it's a little disjointed so that, the, they have to actually, actually explain like what the function is. So it'll be like they're they're selecting another character. So this is you reacting to the other character that they oh, select okay. from the player selects. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, well that makes sense. And then Shikamaru's he always is down on everything. So <laughs> it's more like really you're gonna take Sakura? What's wrong with you? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so you get to have a lot of fun with that. And then. When it comes to fighting, it's all like, uh, ooh, uh, you know, and the, you you have to okay. break up, down all the little sounds. Oh, and they, put them in, they put them in little packages, so it'll be like yeah. this is a punch to the gut, and give me three different punches to the gut, and they're small punches to the gut. Didn't really hurt you. <laughs> okay, and then <laughs> and then they'll go. Now these are bigger, and then bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and so they do those at the end of the day um, because you usually. Kind of really hard on your voice because that's yeah. where the screaming and the right. death. The, you're, now this punch kills you. You know, so video games can be hard that way, but um, and they're a little bit disjointed. But boy, you can crank right through them, <laughs> and and uh, they're they're fun and uh, it's a different pay scale, so it's great. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, Simon. Second last question. What is a common myth about your job or industry? That we are all in the same room, I think. We we kind of touched on that before. A lot yeah. of people are like, what's it like to work with Miley Flanagan? I, well, I know because we, we're old friends, but I don't know from the show. Yeah. <laughs> I've never worked with her on Naruto at all. Other than she's already laid down her tracks and then I lay down my tracks. You know, that's okay. right. All right, our last question from our moderator. Okay, so I also noticed that you got those pictures of pizza on your Instagram. <laughs> What's your thoughts of pineapple and pizza? I love it. <laughs> uh, well, go. you can tell uh, I love a lot of things on my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Look, in life, as it is with pizza and with anime, whether you're into um, dub or no dub or you like it with sub or, you know, whatever you want to do, you want to speak it in the original Japanese, uh, no subtitles, whatever, or if you want pineapple on your pizza, if you can make it work for you and you like it, God love you. I, I don't, I, you know, if you, look, if you like it, that's all that matters. Yeah. And I, I feel like we spend a lot of time saying, making rules about things like, well, you can't put pineapple on a pizza. So what? Who cares? Don't yeah. have pineapple on your people pizza. You know, that's fine for you. You don't have to have a crusade to stop pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people yeah. enjoy it. Let them enjoy it. And that is, uh, I think that's kind of true about life, right? right? Like the things you like. And if other people like things you don't like, don't worry about it. It doesn't affect you. Just yeah, absolutely. Everybody be happy, be nice. You know, if we all love anime, we all love anime. It doesn't matter if you how you enjoy it. I don't care. 100%. You know, that's the point. And same with movies and, you know, everything else. Right. Okay. All right. We have a few <laughs> questions left before we end the show. So we're going to. Random questions. Yeah. yeah audio random questions. Questions. Why is this show still going? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> what is one thing on your bucket list that you must do? Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I've always wanted to go. You know, I've never been to London. I'd like to go to London. Yeah. Go to London. Okay. Yeah, I've been to England, but I've never been to London. So I think okay. I could spend a few days in London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all time favorite song. Um I I'm gonna go with uh Don't Dream It's Over 
uh, by Crowded House. Oh, that's interesting. Do you know that one? No. Okay, must be that's from New one. Zealand. Uh, it's an '80s song. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey now, hey now, don't. Oh, oh, no. you do know it. Know it. I like yeah. a lot of their stuff, but I just grabbed that one because I like Crowded House. So. No, that's a good song. All right, um, something special or unique about yourself, not many people know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if people don't know it, it's probably because I don't want them to know. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a pretty open book. I, you know, people ask. Yeah. In fact, I talk too much. I'm sure my wife, as soon as I get out of there, she's like, you, you shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. Sorry. I probably, you're probably right. I probably shouldn't. But uh, yeah, I'm a little, uh, I can be a little chatty, as it were. So. Oh, that's okay. All right. Um, if your best friend came to you as an animal, what animal would that be? <laughs> Just what animal would I want them to yep. be? Uh, no, but how would you recognize them? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Say again. How, how would you recognize them? Like what animal you'd be like, yeah, that's definitely my best friend. Oh, you're at, you, these are these, you know what? All these, some of these questions I say are real thinkers. <laughs> like, there's no way I could have had any kind of prep for that. Uh, to <laughs> nope, it's uh, rando. Yeah, I again, I don't, I'd have to really sit and ponder that <laughs> for a while. <laughs> Just have to think of the specific friend, and then go, okay. okay. So what if that person was an animal? Now, uh, how would I recognize them if you know if they came to me as that animal, and uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, if the dog was wearing running shoes, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. That's a weird, okay. that's a, All right. it's an interesting um, question. Sorry, say again. No. Sorry. F uh, favorite commercial. Favorite commercial. Um, I, I love those progressive ads where the parents, where the kids are, the people, young people that buy houses are turning into their parents. Though there's yeah. one out there. Oh, yeah. It's not necessarily the funniest of the series, but it's the one I'm thinking of right now, where the guy is cleaning the garbage cans, and yeah. uh, and the 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 guy with the mustache who kind of trains people to not be like their parents is saying, yeah. "Why are you, you know, cleaning the the garbage cans?" He's like, "What are you doing? I'm yeah. cleaning the garbage cans." He's like, "Why?" <laughs> <It's like laughs> garbage. And then and then the guy goes. He's got. I noticed you have little padlocks on your garbage cans. He goes, "Yeah, you can't. You can't be too safe." And he goes, "People are going to steal your garbage." <laughs> <laughs> I love those ads because one it kind of talks about older generation people, the, the things that our parents do, which I think is really fun. Yeah. And then also it's these younger people doing it. And I just love the way that the guy with the mustache is trying to help them. Doctor, the doctor yeah. that's trying to. His just I his response is sometimes like you completely failed at that. <laughs> <laughs> I like All that right. whole series of ads. I do too. Okay. If you could create an alter ego of yourself as an anime character, what would your name, power, and voice sound like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd have to use my own voice, right? I'd have to be oh, this you can change it to whatever you want, right? Yeah, but the, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe then I could just be, I'll be Superman, you know, because then you're just you pick something that you'd want to be or something. Uh, okay. uh, my power would be to make people laugh, and uh, okay. and then cool. that would be a great power to have. And then um, I don't know. I like my name. <laughs> but, yeah, and then uh, what was the third part of that? What would the voice sound oh, like? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Tom Gibbs here. Time to get hey. along. <laughs> Perfect. That's a good alter ego. All right. It's, All right. It's, no, I guess that is me. I shouldn't have. If oh, I was a superhero, I guess is how that went. <laughs> well, that's pretty good, though. Um, okay. Favorite cartoon growing up? Uh, I did like Super Friends. That's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, I like the Flintstones. You know, I watched so much. Scooby-Doo, I think, would have been probably, if you asked me when I was a kid, uh, I probably would have said Scooby-Doo at the time. It's a good choice. Yeah. 
Um, okay. If you could time travel, where and what time would you visit? Um, I think it would be fun to see see Hollywood like uh, the 1920s, 19 uh, oh, yeah. silent film era. Just like just to see how you know, like everything's so built up now to see it stripped down to nothing and kind of hobnob with some of those uh, actors that were. But you know what? This this kind of goes back to bring it all the way around. This is the age we're living in now, where somebody's going to go. Wouldn't it have been great to meet so and so that then transformed media by doing his yeah. TikTok show or whatever. You know what I mean? Like we're out there. The, Absolutely. The, the creative geniuses are there. We just don't know who they are yet. Right. Absolutely. Um, what is one job you would never consider doing? Um, sewer repairman. <laughs> and there are people that do that for a living and i i just would be too grossed out for that <laughs> yeah that's a good one I ne yeah. i've never heard anybody say on our show sewer repairman yeah. yep. <laughs> especially in new york right i've heard there's some big rats out there oh yeah yeah but having to climb down in the sewers and, re and fix them yeah that would be pretty yeah. dirty job i thought i tried to think of what would be the dirtiest job you could have Okay, so dirt gets you grossed out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have three questions left. So our first uh, first of three is <laughs> biggest fear. Biggest, biggest fear. Fear. Uh, not a big fan of bugs in general. Bugs? Uh, I wouldn't, you know, vermin are pretty bad too. Uh, but. Yeah. I don't know. If I saw a big spider, that would be the one thing I'd be like, mm, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, in our household, I'm the guy that has to deal with the spiders. So you have to squish them? Okay. I remember my dad didn't like spiders, so it would be my mom that would have to kill the spiders. My dad would have to deal with mice. <laughs> Any kind of oh. room, you know. Uh, and he didn't seem to have any problem. He'd, he'd trap them and then, you know, get put them in a, like a margarine drawer and take them outside and let them go and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mom would just freak out. And then my dad would be, uh, you know, hey, Faye, come up here. There's a spider on the ceiling. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. They work together. Yeah. yeah, they did. In our household, I'm both. I do it all, you know. Oh, so, you do it all. Okay. Well, I, which is good because you face your That's fears and you got to go, I got to get in there and deal with this, you know. This is Absolutely. my job. <laughs> Okay, so see. our second last question is, do you have any up and coming projects that you want to promote or anything that's coming up for you? Yeah, you what's wanna... going on in your life? You know, a lot of that, a lot of like when it comes to acting stuff, you just don't know because, you know, things come up on Tuesday and you shoot them on Friday. And then you're once you're done with it on Friday, you don't know what the next thing is. So it's <laughs> so, so you're always the future is unknown, although uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, conventions and stuff, I'm going to. Uh, Pensacola, Florida in uh, February and I'm going to um, and uh, I'm going to that's my wife telling me that we're getting we're supposed to go somewhere in a little bit so I got to wrap it up pretty soon yeah. but um, anyway I've got those kind of things coming up uh, live events doing Alabama Huntsville Alabama and, um, so got some store signings and stuff coming up that that we're planning but uh it's a that that's kind of stuff that i can put on the calendar the right. the voiceover stuff it's like they'll call me next they might call Why me not? on Thursday and say hey are you free we need four hours on friday and i'm like yeah okay. right. and then once okay. it's done you'll never work again at least that's the way it feels <laughs> so our last and final question of the show is uh, <laughs> there any questions for us do I have any questions for you? Uh, I, yeah. I, unfortunately, I'd love to know more, but I just I just got the cue that I need to get going here. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much. It was great to be able to spend this much time with you guys, and I'd love to chat with you more, but I, I really got to get going. So um, thank you so much. It was really fun. Uh, I'm not going to ask you any yeah. questions because if you give answers like I do, they're super long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And thank you to the thank chat so joining much. us thank this you for Saturday the chat. evening.
Yeah. Thank you very much for having All me. Right. Take really care, everybody. It. See you Take next care. time. I hope you had a good time. Uh, please give me a follow at The Real Tom Gibbis on Instagram and on TikTok. Thank you. It all helps. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Take care, Take care guys. Bye. <laughs>